Now, we're talking about the thirst for electricity in this province. It is growing, and to meet demand, the province is considering, or perhaps maybe even should increase its reliance on a homegrown nuclear solution. Now, that's according to a new report from Canadians for Nuclear Energy. It says an investment in 10 new reactors is necessary. Chris Kiefer is president of the Grassroots Nonprofit Advocacy Group. He's an emergency physician in Toronto and joins us now. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. How are you? Doing pretty well. So what exactly is this report calling for? So we're facing, you know, really increased electricity demand here in Ontario, which is a pretty new thing for the last 20 years. We've just been kind of coasting on our existing assets. Um, but the consensus is really emerging and not just from advocacy groups like my own, um, but from our grid planners um, that we need to double or even triple our grid. Um, and that's partially to deal with just the organic demand of increased immigration and also, you know, bringing a lot of manufacturing back to Ontario, but obviously also because of, of our climate goals. And that means we need to get really serious about not just building the kind of end user products like electric vehicles and heat pumps, um, but building the uh, electricity generation required to power those things. Well, and you're calling for more nuclear reactors. Why? Well, we're building upon a tried and tested legacy. I think a lot of people don't realize that we're actually climate leaders around the world. We have one of the lowest carbon electricity grids in the world. Um, you know, I began my medical practice when Ontario still burned coal for one quarter of its electricity. Um, you know, our, our nuclear fleet provided 90% of the electricity to completely phase out coal that eliminated smog days, uh, here in Ontario, saved upwards of a thousand lives a year. Um, so we have a real legacy to build on and critically why nuclear now? Um, well, it's because we're really good at it. Um, we've been refurbishing our existing nuclear plants to give us another 40 years of life out of them. Um, that's maintaining the supply that we have. We need to grow that. Um, those refurbishments are mega projects um, and they're proceeding ahead of schedule and on budget. Um, so I think we're in, a, we're in a very good position in Ontario to build on that legacy of success and build the power generation we require for an electrified economy and, and for climate action. Well, why not focus, though, on renewable energy like the solar or wind? Well, we've done that, um, you know, and it hasn't been cheap. Um, over the course of the contracts of the Green Energy Act, we will have spent $60 billion. Um, and we're actually not getting great return on, on value for that investment. Our big challenge is running our air conditioners in summer heat waves. That's when our grid peaks. And unfortunately, that's when, you know, our wind fleet just disappears. You're probably familiar with those hot, humid days in the summer where you'd kill for a breeze to blow some of that sweat off your brow. Um, but that's deadly serious, um, especially when it comes to an electrified economy and when it comes to running factories that need to be going 24-7 around the clock. Um, wind and solar just simply can't step up and do that. Um, so, you know, nuclear is that reliable source um, and it matches our demand profile really well. Um, and it brings a huge amount of local economic demand. Let's not forget that almost all wind and solar is imported here into country. So we're supporting other countries' supply chains. Um, but our CANDU reactor technology is all made in Ontario. So every dollar we invest in this technology, we get a dollar forty back in economic activity, really at the local level through hiring, you know, highly skilled tradespeople um, and others who, who recycle those incomes in their economies. So, you know, we have a win on climate, we have a win on air quality, and, and we have a win on the economy. So, you know, that's that's pretty good in my books. Well, why not invest more in hydroelectricity? Like we still have rivers in northern Ontario that, that some are, are generating electricity. Why not put in a second row of generators? I don't know if it's that simple, but isn't that their potential there? Because with nuclear, there's always a concern about safety yeah i mean interestingly there's also a concern about safety with with hydro um you know there's a lot of power behind a hydro dam that, that can go wrong but leaving that aside um we simply don't have the quantity of hydroelectric resources that we need you know that's the thing we go to the best spots first and niagara falls is obviously the best spot we have there exists some hydro opportunities um, in the north, um, but they're quite small. They don't meet, meet the needs of doubling or tripling our grid. And let's not forget, I mean, you're flooding a lot of land. There's, there's land use conflicts. There's indigenous rights issues. You know, the James Bay Hydro Project in Quebec produces about the same amount of electricity as our, as our nuclear fleet. It required flooding an area of land the size of Belgium, 17,000 square kilometers. 
our entire um, can-do fleet and the mines and everything else exists on a 20 square kilometer footprint. So we really have to look at this objectively and figure out, you know, what are our priorities as a society? And I think nuclear meets um, our needs very, very well in, in the least environmentally impactful manner. Shouldn't we be looking at the other end as well, like reducing the demand, like living more energy efficiently? 100%. Um, but we're talking about electrifying everything. You know, 25% of our emissions in Canada is just from driving vehicles. Um, if we go from using gasoline and diesel to using electricity, even if we get really efficient, that still means a lot more electricity. And again, that's why there's this consensus. It's not just from my group, other environmental groups and the grid planners saying we're going to need to double the amount of electricity we produce. And that's that's enormous. That is a huge mobilization as a society. Uh, we've done it before. We commissioned 22 of these homegrown candy reactors in just 22 years. And I think we're well positioned to do it again um, because of the activity of our of our nuclear fleet um, with our with our refurbishments of our of our existing fleet, which, you know, lock in and maintain um, this low carbon grid that we have. But, you know, we got to grow it even if we get really efficient and we should get efficient. What about nuclear waste? You know, that that's always raised when when talking about nuclear energy and, and you're with Canadians for nuclear energy. How do you address that? For sure. And listen, it's not the first time I've answered this question. Um, you know, nuclear power runs on uranium and uranium, it's it's remarkable because it has so much more energy locked into it than even things like coal or natural gas. We're talking a million times more. And that means you have very little fuel and very little waste out the back end, which makes it a problem that's you know a challenge to manage, but it's manageable. All of the spent nuclear fuel we've produced as a nation in 70 years would fit on one hockey rink stacked one telephone pole high. So there's not a lot of it, and we have a perfect safety record managing it. And we have long-term solutions in place, such as things like a deep geologic repository or even recycling it. Um, you know, we're making a mountain out of a molehill, I think, with nuclear waste as we ignore the enormous amounts of CO2 that we keep putting into the atmosphere, you know, literally threatening, you know, the future of, of our grandchildren. So I think we have to, you know, consider everything, um, look at the risks, benefits and alternatives. Um, but when you do that in an objective way, um, I think that nuclear waste is, is a much smaller problem than it's been made out to be. So what's your sense? Uh, is the federal or the provincial governments listening to you? Absolutely. Um, and, you know, on the federal level, there's been a huge turnaround. Um, our environment minister, Stephen Gilbo, a former Greenpeace activist, um, had a very consistent anti-nuclear record. And he's quoted just last month as saying, listen, there's an emerging scientific consensus. The climate scientists are saying we need nuclear as part of our solutions. So I've changed my mind. Um, Justin Trudeau uh, just committed to a big return to nuclear, in his words. And on the provincial level, we have a very supportive provincial government. Um, and, you know, you need to have that kind of coordination with Canadian high technology. We've seen that a lot of other amazing innovations, um, you know, like the Avro Aero, like the Bombardier C-Series jet, um, which have not thrived because we haven't organized as a society to support them and take advantage of all of that local economic activity. And our report hopes to galvanize um, the sector and society to come together around this proven made in Canada um, energy and, and climate tool um, and get building. Appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. That's Chris Kiefer, President of Canadians for Nuclear Energy.